Welcome to Electron Line. Before we actually try to find the Fourier series of all kinds of periodic functions, we need to realize that, again, it came down to find those constants, a sub naught, a sub n, and b sub n, but that always involved integrating a whole bunch of integrals. And it turns out that many of those integrals can be simplified because they will usually equal zero. And here are some of those that we need to be familiar with. If we're going to integrate the sine of n omega t dt from 0 to t, well, when we integrate the sine that's equal to the negative cosine, we do need the n omega in the differential, so we're going to write minus 1 over n omega times the integral of the sine, which is the cosine, evaluated from 0 to t, which is equal to minus 1 over n omega times the cosine of n times 2 pi over t, well, where that came from, is that omega can be written as 2 pi f, which is 2 pi over t. Plug that in here and evaluate that at the upper limit and the lower limit. Notice that the cosine at the upper limit will be n times 2 pi, and that will always be equal to 1. And evaluate the lower limit, the cosine of 0 is also always equal to 1. So we get 1 minus 1, which is always 0. So now that we know that, we never have to integrate that again. Whenever we see the sine of n omega t from 0 to t, we know, well, that's simply equal to 0. If we do the same for the cosine of n omega t, again, the integral is 1 over n omega, in this case, the positive sine of n omega t. Again, when we evaluate that from the limit from 0 to t, since the only options are some integer number of 2 pi, and of course, the sine of an integer number 2 pi is always equal to 0, or the sine of 0 which again is always equal to 0. So 0 minus 0 equals 0. So whenever we see these types of integrals, we already know they're going to equal 0, and we don't have to work them out. Likewise, when we have an integral where we have the product of the sine of n omega t and the cosine of n omega t, that can be then simplified into two integrals, one that says the sine of n plus m omega t, and the sine of n minus m omega t, and regardless of the values of n and m, and regardless of the fact that there's a constant one-half in front, this looks very much like this integral right there. Therefore, we know that this integral will equal 0, and this integral will equal 0. So automatically, we know that 0 as well. What if we have something like this? The sine of n w t, or n omega t, times the cosine of n omega t, or the sine of n omega t times the sine of m omega t. Oh, notice, I think I made a mistake here. This should be m, not n. Let me fix that. There we go. Because I want this to be different. n and m are both integers, but they can be different values. As long as these are different values, as long as n and m are not the same, we can then take this, rewrite it like this, and again, notice that this is the sine of some integer times omega t and the sine of some integer times omega t. And again, this looks a lot like over here, so we know that it's going to be equal to zero. Now, taking the integral of the sine of n omega t times the sine of m omega t or the cosine of n omega t times the cosine of m omega t, again, if we work these out, again, you will find out that this will equal zero as long as n does not equal m. If n equals m over here, or n equals m over here, then we end up with these two integrals right here. Notice that the cosine squared of n, since n and m are not equal, we would write it as the cosine square of n omega t, or write it as the sine square of n omega t. Then you realize that the trigonometric identity for this can be written as this. And again, notice that this integral here looks very much like this integral, so this would go to 0. Same over here, minus the cosine of 2n omega t will look very much like this, so this goes to 0. So the only portion of the integral that survives is the constant 1 here times dt. So this will now equal this or this, which means it's equal to 1 half t evaluated from 0 to t, or simply the period divided by 2. So for all these integrals right here, they will always be zero, except for the case where we have this, where n and m are equal to one another, so that we can write it like this or like this, and that means that the integral will be t over 2. Otherwise, in all of the cases, all those integrals will be equal to zero. That will make the job a lot easier because 
Finding the Fourier series often involves solving a lot of integrals, but if we then realize which ones are zero so we don't have to work them out, we can save a lot of time. And that's why we did this video here, so in the future we can save a lot of time for simply recognizing what integrals we have and realizing that they're going to be equal to zero. Or, in this case, equal to t over 2. And that's how it's done.